People who are close friends from Vancouver. Some of them previously have furious George experience, but choosing to come back to play Blackfish this year so they could play with their friends. So a lot of chemistry on their side as well. Manic. Uh, sur Manic, c'est une composition de joueurs recrues qui ont grandi au niveau junior et de vétérans qui viennent apporter leur expérience au programme du club M. Uh, nice catch. By the Blackfish player. Manic pressuring on the man to man defense. The first long pass, and it's a nice one being completed. So it's a tie game to one early in this first half. Skagging Kata with the score there as well, and that's a player we're going to keep our eyes on throughout the course of this game. When I talk about players with Furious George experience, he probably has the most on this team played for years and played at national team level, senior national teams, junior national teams. So he's definitely going to be having a big presence here today and already off to the, a good start with the first goal here for Blackfish. So weather-wise, uh, we have a, there is a sunny day in the forecast. There's a steady wind going from away to uh, where we are standing right now. So sideways wind will more likely have an impact on the game even though those uh, players have a great handling skills you never know Alors c'est un à un en ce début de match les deux équipes qui ont euh, qui ont réussi à convertir leur possession en offensive dès le début de cette rencontre La ligne offensive de Manic qui est prête à recevoir le lancer d'engagement de Blackfish Et voilà le disque est dans les airs. C'est parti pour le troisième point de cet affrontement de quart de finale de la division Open. Ce championnat canadien d'Ultimate édition 2018. Champagne en possession du disque. Cherche une option. Trouve Thérou. Vraiment ensuite à Champagne, le vétéran, le numéro 10, le mieux. Frédéric Lemieux. Trouve Riopel. On change à champagne, on dit ça, bouge le 10 rapidement. Thérou, à la ligne de brick, trouve Paris. Paris cherche une option, 
Terrou attaque la ligne, il y a contact. On bataille ferme. Champagne, toujours sur la ligne. Cherche une option. Remessagement, soutien. Couvri au pelle. Deux coéquipiers de longue date. Le mieux, le numéro 2. Enchaîne. Oh, c'est un peu loin. Oh, c'est hors de portée, malheureusement. Not a bad decision from Le Mieux, but just a little too much gas on this last row. And he just uh, did the first turnover of this game. So first opportunity for Blackfish to get a break point early in this first half. So let's see how Blackfish can take advantage of this opportunity. A long pass. Being caught, nice reading by Blackfish receiver. Number 28. Turnover, unfortunate turnover on the reset. Other opportunity by Manik to convert this all line point. Oh, nice bid. There was contact. There's a foul call. I don't think it's going to be contested. No contest. Quickly getting back into action. Champagne à la porte de la zone de points et trouve son coéquipier, le numéro 28, Jordan Ferries, et inscrit le deuxième point de ce match manique en avance 2 à 1. So pretty uh, unfortunate turnover on forced error by Blackfish, losing the disc on a reset pass, which provided the opportunity uh, to Manic to catch up on this O-line. Very well execution. And now Manik is ahead by one. Yeah, and we're seeing now at the start of this game as well, Blackfish able to generate those turnovers. So definitely gonna start to see a little less clean points, probably from both of these teams. We get a chance now to see Manik's D-line come out and put this pressure, see if they can shut down the likes of Eric Tang and Gagan Katha out on the line right now. So we'll see what they can do, but a good start from both of these teams overall. Manic taking advantage of getting the disc back from Blackfish and making no mistakes on their second opportunity. It's early in the game, but it's going to be, we expect the game to be win or lose on maybe one or two turnovers, not more than that. So far, the O-line has uh, provided, uh, showed some great execution. The D-lines have been uh, so far a little shy, but we see the pressure building up slowly but surely. So we can expect the game getting tighter and tighter the further we go. Alors Manik vient de faire le lancer d'engagement. Blackfish en possession. On tente d'isoler un joueur du côté des chandails bleus. Et c'est la bombe, c'est dans les airs, ça flotte. Quatre joueurs se battent pour le disque. Et malheureusement, on a voulu attaquer le disque un peu trop tôt. C'est hors de portée et c'est un revirement en faveur de Manik. Zach Massy, le 88 en possession du disque, à surveiller aujourd'hui. Remet en soutien avec un lancé marteau. Trouve duplex. Il y a eu un appel. Il semble peut-être avoir un appel de marché. It looks like there was a travel call or, or, or uh, maybe an offensive foul. Going to the observers. Some discussion happening. Seems like there was no impact, so we will go back. So good spirit by both teams. So Duplay in possession of the disc right now. Manik avec une opportunité de bris tôt dans cette première demi. Massy en possession du disque. Feinte la longue. Côté revers. Encore Massy à surveiller lui aujourd'hui. Cherche une option. Beaucoup de circulation. On remet en soutien. On enchaîne du côté de Manic. Brisson. Bisson plutôt. En possession du disque. Duplet, encore lui. C'est la bombe, mais non. Ça manquait un peu d'un. There was a, an angle, but on the, on the wrong side on the last uh, Manic's long throw. So unfortunate. Uh, Turnover once again, giving an opportunity back to Blackfish to score on their own line. 
Yeah, and you could see that Fabé Paquet there wanted to give that IO edge on the disc in order to have it flatten out in this wind, but just putting a little bit too much on it, and it's going to catch the wind and roll away each time that happens. And right away, a D, layout D, through the poach defense for Manic on the end zone line. So here's the opportunity. Disc is floating. Oh, it's unfortunately a little too much gas. We want it to go a little, maybe too quick. Unfortunate turnover. That was a great opportunity. Great layout D by Manic's uh, defense. I think it's Duplex who has done that uh, layout, not sure. Anyway, Blackfish on O. Zonish E, Zonish D by uh, Manic. On defensive, the zone uh, de la part de Manic. Jusqu'à date, a réussi à ralentir l'offensive de Blackfish et voilà. Trouve le trou, enchaîne. Blackfish on the doorstep of the end zone to score and tie the game to two. Nice lateral movement. No, nice bid, but what a great break pass that was by Blackfish. Our time did game to two now with a great and patient execution near the end zone. So great execution by Blackfish, even though they lost possession twice in the, the last point. So they were able to recover the disc and tie the game early in this first half of this quarterfinal game opposing Manic and Blackfish. Uh, yeah, and there you see Blackfish taking advantage of a second opportunity given to them they learnt from the defense that Manic had put on them that first go around. They were trapped down on the near corner of the end zone, unable to get it through the layout D from Manic there. And the second time, bringing it into the same location, figuring it out, and they go all the way down the field to get the hold. We mentioned earlier that this game is going to be win or lose by maybe one or two uh, possession and you see the, the the opportunity of Manic they were on the doorstep of a of a break point and they were not able to convert it so maybe they will regret that lack of execution later in the game who knows Manic au service recevra le lancer d'engagement Champagne patiemment lit le disque qui atterri à l'extérieur ça sera repris à la ligne the brick. How important is a, a pool? You need to put it in the field. Otherwise, it's a it's a 20-yard gift you're giving to the other to the uh, opposite team. So, another things you need to consider in order to win an ultimate game. Le mieux en possession du disque. On gagne des verges rapidement du côté des blancs. Du chêneau attaque le centre. Oh, une passe qui était un peu, manquait un peu de précision, un peu à l'arrière du, du destinataire. Et now Blackfish in possession, looking to score the first break point of this game. Oh, what a great layout, D. By number 28, Jordan, Ferries. Jordan Ferries there getting absolutely horizontal for that disc. That's what you want to see by your O-line. Great defense. Champagne looking to score. Lemieux is the target, scoring the third point du Manic. Manic qui mène maintenant 3 à 2. Aucun bris jusqu'à date dans les 5 points qui ont été joués lors de ce match. Alors, euh, belle, euh, superbe défensive de Jordan Ferry sur la dernière séquence. Vraiment un plongeon euh, parfaitement parallèle au sol qui a permis à son équipe de reprendre possession du disque là, vraiment à la porte des, euh, de la zone de points. Ils ont réussi à convertir après une belle fin de champagne qui finalement a trouvé le mieux du côté bris. So Blackfish will be receiving the pull in order to tie the game to three. And both teams here still looking for their first break of the game. Of course, Blackfish will look 
to hold before they can do that. But Manic, we saw them able to trap Blackfish in that corner of the end zone. So we'll be interested to see how they come out with a defensive set here. The wind is a crosswind. I would look to put some sort of poachy zone on these handlers to stop those hucks into the lanes. We know that Blackfish does like to put it deep. East Coast versus West Coast game here at National Championship. We are in Brampton, Ontario. What a great venue we have here. Fields are great. Organization is awesome. Even though there were some uh, weather challenge on Thursday and Friday, but the great, the great uh, Ultimate Canada organization found ways to mitigate the damage. So miss, uh, miss cued here and a turnover by Blackfish. So Manic is now in possession and is menaced to inscrire the premier point bris of this match. Reprend the marque de bris. Belle passe au Tébris. C'est Bisson in possession du 10. Joueur de Manic, aussi joueur du Royal de Montréal. Cherche une option. Il n'y a, a pas beaucoup de rythme du côté de l'offensive montréalaise. On tourne à 10. Bris 7 à la porte de la zone de points. Son coéquipier. On remet en soutien. On est patient du côté des Montréalais. Et voilà le point bris. Bisson qui inscrit le quatrième point. Moi, Manic mène maintenant 4 à 2. Premier point bris de ce match. Manic putting that defensive pressure on that we just talked about as well there, Etienne. They came down and really stifled the handlers, forcing a miscue to go up on the reset opportunity and the wind also carrying that throw away. And this time we see Manic take advantage of the opportunity on their last break chance. They were a little bit more rushed, a little bit more trying to force it into the end zone. This time took their time, swung it around, found their opportunity. It's in uh, Blaskiewicz who did the defense for Manik. A great player and probably the most challenging last name to pronounce on the Manik's roster. So Manik leading 42 early in this first half. In the first half, no break point by Blackfish. Blackfish needs to get some energy, looking for a reset after a high stall. And I believe there's a high stall count call by Zach Messi, number 88. Looks like it's being contested. So we'll, let's see what the observers rules. Yeah, and Andrew Ling there with the disc, thinking he got that off. He was pretty calm on his release, and you have to think when somebody is that relaxed that they think they have enough time. So either not aware of what the stall count was or genuinely did get it off. And it happens also when you're when you're counting down, the higher you're going through your stall, the faster you tend to count. So, but the rulers, the observers ruled that there was no uh, no stall down. So, Blackfish and no, oh, I miscued. The, but there was a foul on the foul on the pass, so it will go back to Samson Hoy, number 12. And it looks like Duplay immediately also signaling for the foul. He knew it happened, so it looks like an uncontested foul. He's signaling, coming in on zero. No hesitation by Duplay. You're totally right. So good spirit here. Even though semifinals are at stake. The blue shirts, Blackfish, looking for a no point. Nice bid by number 13. There's a long pass, and it's no, it's down. Probably the win here hasn't helped. In the, for the, the disc to reach out the receivers. So Manic will be in possession early in the second half, looking to score, to score the first point of the second half. Yeah, Jordan Dillon trying to shoot that one, and you can see the wind, it is coming more towards us, but also pushing towards that end zone too. So just lasering that disc, and it's gonna bring it in, but setting the pivot foot in the back corner of the end zone. Hmm, maybe not the best. Decision by Messi. He throws it away just to get out of trouble. It's everybody's disc. And oh, Blaskowicz landing this disc. Fighting this real battle. Blaskowicz vient faire une superbe lecture de disc. Atterrir avec le disc. Et maintenant, c'est Manic qui menace Barito. Et là, le disc qui flotte. Oh, c'est bien. Rattrapé par Brissette. Qui trouve Messi. Messi. 
cherche une passe côté bris. Trouve duplex. Là, il y a eu un appel, je crois que c'est un appel, c'est une, une blessure, je crois. Le numéro 13, là, Thomas Faber-Paquet qui euh, semble boiter. C'est Jordan Ferry qui viendra le remplacer. Le numéro 28. On rappelle que Manic a commencé le point en défensive et il y a eu, euh, il y a eu un revirement, une passe incomplète du côté de Blackfish dans la zone de point. Et là, Massy qui a pris possession du disque loin dans sa propre zone. Lancer une passe longue là, qui était un peu, euh, en bon français, passez-moi l'expression, un Hail Mary. Et c'est Manic qui a repris possession, qui a capturé, qui a attrapé cette passe finalement. Et là, Manic qui menace d'inscrire un troisième point bris de ce match. En début de deuxième demi. Et là, la passe c'est bas. Oh, c'est bien rattrapé par Ferries. Et là, Duplet qui en doit une à Ferries. Hein. Massy avec la passe. C'est Bisson qui est la cible. Non, il y a eu contact ici. Est-ce qu'il y a eu un appel? Oh, les joueurs discutent. Est-ce que Bisson avait vraiment l'opportunité? Was it, did Bisson had a bid on that? This? Yeah. From oh. my angle, I'm not sure he that did. Was, that was a far, pretty far away from, from Bisson. Still the players discussing. Baskowitz doing some reenactment also. Yeah, and you, you do also want to see that discussion stay with the two players, Katha and Blaskovic, both having their own discussion. But it looks like they've decided there was no play on the disc, so it will be back with Blackfish. It's still another situation where I push you calling a foul, arguing, taking a breath in, breathe out, and then, well, you know, your point, you have a point, so I think you're right, so no need for the observers. So still, well fought it by though, but great spirit by the two teams. Samson, Hoy. Bombing this one. Floating, oh, well read by number 10. And a quick pass for Blackfish. Score with their sixth score of the game. They're still trailing by two. Eight to six for Manic. And Blackfish really had to get that hold out of the halftime as well, bringing this game back within two points. And still a good job there. Samson Hoy, a very late stall count throw, but If there's anybody you want to throw to on a late stall count throw, it is Gagan Katha. So reading that disc better than the Manic defender, coming down with it, a quick shot to the end zone, and still looking for their first break of the game now. So number 10, uh, number 12, Samson Hoy being a great handler, but when you have a receiver like Chata at the other end, you kind of become a better handler when you have that, that kind of a Very high quality receiver at the other end. So great job by Blackfish fighting through this second half to close the gap, which they will have uh, the opportunity of in the upcoming point. So they will be pulling to Manic with in hopes of scoring their first break point, not only of this half, but of the game. And you see the same offensive unit out on the line as well now for Manic there so consistent and efficient with the disc, so it's going to be very hard for Blackfish to find this break. They're going to have to really shut down the likes of Jordan Ferries in the lanes. Champagne on the disc has been flawless as well, so have to do something different here. Let's see if they come out with a zone defense as they did in the first half. So the disc is rolling out. Champagne will put it back into play. At first sight, it seems like Blackfish will be playing a man-to-man -man defense. They've tried to uh, their, their zone defense earlier in the game with, let's say, mitigated success. Haven't found the clue to Manix online yet. Champagne en possession du disque. Et trouve Paris. Avec un gain d'une quinzaine de verges. Paris cherche le soutien. Champagne remet rapidement à Thérou. Thérou, la recrue. Cherche une option, trouve le mieux. On vient de franchir la mi-terrain, le mieux. Trouve Riopel, le vétéran, le numéro 7. Il feinte, cherche un soutien. C'est à Thérou qui enchaîne maintenant à le mieux, le mieux. Le compte qui monte. Oh, et voilà, il cherchait un champagne, champagne qui a trébuché, mais du chêneau qui vient sauver les meubles ici. Le vétéran du chêneau. C'est maintenant Ferries. À la ligne de uh, Brick. 
Ferries avec une passe brille qui trouve le mieux. Là. Elle a une passe haut, ça semble être loin. Mais Ferries qui plonge pour attraper ce disque et inscrire le neuvième point de Manic. Il confirme la avance de trois points dans cette deuxième demi. C'est 9 à 6 pour le Manic. Jordan Ferries, absolutely incredible play. From my angle up here, immediately I was getting ready to talk about what Blackfish was going to do next because there was no chance he was making it to that disc. But what an incredible play, proving us wrong. And you see, plays like that for Manic is the reason that they're ahead in this game as well. They look like they want the disc more. They look like they want that spot in the semifinal more right now. So we all thought that this this was landing out of bounds. There was a lot of gas in the the Muse flick, but the uh, Ferries saving the days with the spectacular layout to catch that point in the end zone. And you mentioned, Bricky, earlier that Blackfish D-line, you know, where's, where's the uh, where, where's the energy? We, we don't feel, we haven't seen any bid yet uh, from Blackfish, so uh, they really need to, to pump it up somehow, some way in order to, to close the gap. They, they're trailing by two breaks, three points the second half and uh, looking at the way that Manix online has been playing so far uh, they have a challenge yeah and at some point sometimes it just takes somebody on your team to step up and make that big play to get the rest of your team pumped up you can see the way Manic was so pumped up after Jordan Ferry's play there so Blackfish needing to come back and generate that at the same time if they can actually find a way to keep this clean too that could really help them they've struggled with the pressure from Manic Blackfish on serve. Oh, nice defense. Number 47. That was a floating disc, but Thomas, Thomas Duplet, qui a fait la défensive. C'est le vétéran Barito, le gaucher, qui reprendra possession du disque. Enchaîne. Numéro 5. On cherche une option en soutien. C'était Bouillon qui était en possession du disque. Maintenant, c'est Bisson. Qui enchaîne à Duplet, l'auteur de cette défensive. Et le voilà, un autre point bris de Manic. Et là, qui vient euh, définitivement de donner une solide secousse à Blackfish. Il mène maintenant 10 à 6 avec un troisième point bris. Manic extending their lead to four points here. No question that they are now the team in control. You can still see how Blackfish can make that run back with three points, but at four points down, they're really going to have to figure something out now or never at this point. And Manic just so in control, so pumped up, and I can't say enough good things about what they've managed to do. When they do get those turnovers, they take care and value the disc, and that is the things that the top teams, the teams looking at making the finals, are going to be doing. I just loved in the last uh, Manix point, the way, as you mentioned, the handler was chill, looking for an easy pass, easy reset, but also the, the cutter is giving some option on both of the reset and also up front, so a uh, great execution by Manic. And out of the three breaks that Manic scored today, the first two were, uh, they had uh, Blackfish paid for unforced area. But this one, Thomas Blaise just won that uh, aerial battles uh, versus Blackfish players. So uh, great defense by Duplex on the, on the last point. So Blackfish on serve, trailing by four with the out of bound pull. So they will take it back at the brick mark. Blackfish with a nice break force pass to start this point. Looking for option, being forced back in on flick. A lefty in the red zone. Blackfish, oh, looking for reset ball. That was a tricky, very ambitious pass, I believe. But uh, Blackfish says there was, was there a foul call or? Anyway, great defense by number 12, even though the pass was very low. Thomas Lalonde Landry didn't take any chances and laid out to defend that this. There was a foul on the pass. Blackfish defender seems to contest that foul if yeah. I'm not mistaken. Immediately Andrew Ling looked to the observer there. Didn't he's listening to the conversation, but he very much seems to have thought he got his hand on that disc. And that's such a tough one when you go to throw 
the backhand on that flick side, there usually can be contact. So Observer ruled that it was a foul disc still with Manic. Reset. Bombs it away. Number 17 is the target. But oh, just slightly out of reach. Michael Hulm was the target. Alors Mika, Michael Hull qui était la cible sur la, la passe de Brissette. Et le vent a probablement joué des tours là, sur euh, la dernière séquence. Black Picks, Black Fish possession at their own goal line. Another bomb. Chatham being the target, but still he could not manage to land that this. So Brissette is back in possession. Manic looking for another break. Oh, there was there was a pick call prior to the last defense. So it will go back. There is still some discussions. There was a pick without any impact, I believe. But McKeown there did go to throw it after the pick was called and there was a hand block from Katha. So if he didn't recognize that pick call, the turnover should still stand, but just some discussion over when it was recognized, where the dish should be. But generally speaking, if there was a turnover, despite the pick call, that remains a turn. So let's see what will be the outcome we're discussing with the observers. Was there a foul call also on the B sets? I'm not sure. I don't think that this was caught, so it has no impact. So I think maybe the discussion here is then that there was a turnover after the pit call, meaning that if the foul on Brissette stands as a foul, the disc is going to stay with Michion there. Manic. Brissett now in possession. <coughs> timeout call. <laughs> so Brissett there taking the timeout, the players figuring out the discussion amongst themselves, which is generally what you want to see them shaking hands. We have seen really good spirit in this game despite the intensity on the field right now. And at this point, Manic still in control. They're causing these turnovers on Blackfish's offensive line consistently and they're being efficient when they get the disc back in their position. I like this timeout call from Brissette. They know that putting this one away can really put the nails down in the coffin here for this Blackfish team, taking it up to 11 to six. So wanting to take advantage here, but they did also call it near the sideline, which is not always what you want to see. You want to see them center it to the middle and then call that timeout. Alors Manik, il appelle un temps d'arrêt. Il met 10 à 6 avec 3 points vrilles d'avance. Une bonne décision de Brissette, advenant que Manic inscrive un autre point bris. Ce serait probablement peut-être pas le point le plus important qui, qui mettrait vraiment la partie hors de portée pour Blackfish, mais ce serait une sérieuse avance que Manic prendrait dans cette deuxième demi. Brissette a toutefois pris son temps d'arrêt assez près de la zone de la ligne de côté. Principe voulant que lorsqu'on prend un temps d'arrêt, on s'assure d'être en bonne possession, en bonne position sur le terrain plutôt, pardonnez-moi. Alors voyons voir comment la ligne défensive du Manic réagira sur la prochaine possession. Blackfish qui semble s'installer sur une zone une défensive de zone pour essayer de contenir la possession montréalaise. Et tout de suite, Brissette, il va avec une lame. À l'opposé, à Bouillon, Bouillon qui fait un disque qui flotte. Et voilà le point bris de Montréal, le numéro 17, Michael Hull, qui confirme une avance de 5 points par Manic en inscrivant un quatrième point bris dans ce match. Wow, what a play from Brissette. They're just going lateral, finding his teammate Bouillon on the opposite side. He never hesitated. He really took time. He saw there was a zone defense. And he, even before the disc was in, he knew exactly what he was going to do. And uh, he executed very well. Yeah, Manek very much in control. We've said this a few times now, but taking this now to a five point lead, 11 to six, and only about 30 minutes remaining in this game. So time not on the side of Blackfish. And 
Manic at this point can start to look towards the semifinal, although they're going to want to continue to focus on this game and close this one out first. But I've got to say, Etienne, if they continue to play the way they're playing, I don't know how they don't close this one out. Four more points to go until they are in the top four. Last throw from uh, Big Set, that impressive lady throw across the field. It just shows signs of confidence. Like, you, you, you know you can do it. It's a risky throw, but hey, you rely on your receivers. You know you can do it, and you have no hesitation. And so far, that's what provided the Manic this great lead of five points about halfway in the second half. So Blackfish receiving the pool. Looking for an option. Bombs it away to Katam. Bisson will try to defend this one. Great battle. Oh, what a great battle. But Blackfish is landing this one. Wow. Two great athletes battling for a disc in the air. And the outcome is favoring Blackfish. What a great read by Katam. Gagging Katha there, the huge grab. This is the kinds of plays that we've seen him do before. Makes it look effortless under so much tight coverage as well. And maybe that is the big play that Blackfish needed to get pumped up here. They've got to find the way to get a break back and still not able to phase this manic offense as well. Maybe trying to come down in a zone and you know, I would like to see something where they come down to zone, maybe assassin on Champagne, take away one of their top throwers out of the game because right now their throws, especially in this wind, they've been uncontested by the Blackfish defense. You're absolutely right. Alors Manic, qui mène toujours par 4 points 11 à 7 dans cette deuxième mi-temps. On vous rappelle qu'on est au championnat canadien d'Ultimate édition 2018 à Brampton, Ontario. On assiste au quart de finale qui oppose euh, le Manic de Montréal à Blackfish de Colombie-Britannique. Alors la ligne offensive montréalaise qui a été, euh, on peut pas dire parfaite, mais qui a livré la marchandise à chaque présence sur le terrain, n'ont pas été brisés encore dans ce match. Ferries. Enchaîne à Thérou avec une petite passe en suspens. Thérou cherche une option. Il y aurait eu un appel pour une obstruction. On discute un peu. Et là, Thérou, le 10, sera remis en jeu. Marie Opel semblait un peu trop seul là, sur la dernière séquence. On discute encore. Blackfish... Euh, commence à se faire tard. Encore beaucoup de temps, beaucoup d'ultimates à jouer, mais l'horloge ne joue pas en faveur de Blackfish. Alors, on reprend les hostilités à l'instant. Thérou toujours en possession du disque. Belle passe côté droit. Ferries. Ferries qui enchaîne à Paris. Paris qui feinte. Enchaîne toujours près de la ligne. Et là, les joueurs de Blackfish qui mettent de la pression. On plonge pour tenter de provoquer le revirement. Champagne qui pivote. Une passe qui flotte. À l'arrière de la zone de point. Oh, c'est une belle défensive de Blackfish. Blackfish was looking for some kind of a momentum, some kind of a sign, some kind of energy, but that's what we saw in the last uh, in the last plays. Justin Chan coming down with that D there for Blackfish, and if they can take advantage of this turnover and get their first break of the game, you never know what kind of momentum swing that could give this blue team. About 30 minutes to play in this game. Oh, what? Paris is denying the hopes of Blackfish of uh, at least scoring for now a and break point. That's exactly what's happened to this Blackfish team all game. When they have gotten turnovers, they're giving it straight back to this manic offense. Thérou, à la hauteur du, uh, de la ligne de brick. Une autre passe qui flotte, c'est Ferries qui... Oh, Ferries qui vient voler ce disque dans les airs! Wow! Quelle action de Ferries ici qui vient littéralement de voler un point au défenseur de Blackfish et Montréal qui mène 12 à 7. Jordan Ferries, unbelievable today in this game and especially that point, I was convinced that the defender had that disc first. Jordan Ferries coming from behind, it's so tough when you don't have the position to get up and make that grab anyways. But like you said, 
floating, looked like he was flying to get that disc, levitating in the air even for a second. And just like that, they're three points away and Manic in control. They look so calm and happy and pumped up and they are en route here to the semifinals. McGregor, the Blackfish player, who was the, the victim of fairies on the last point, he just, his body language says, well, I just can't believe what just happened. Like, I was sure I was, the disc was in my hand and, and somebody, something happened above my head. And that something is called Jordan Fairies. And at this point as well, if everything stays like this, the way it is, Phoenix is leading 10 to 5 over Quake, so we would have a Manic Phoenix semifinal matchup later on today, which could be quite exciting. The number one seed versus this fourth seeded team, but the way Manic is playing right now, I would have to say that's going to be an incredibly close game as well. And you would imagine there's a significant rivalries between Ottawa and Montreal through our drives, the way these two teams have met gazillions of times in the past. They know each other, and I'm sure we'll look forward for a great semifinal. But in the meantime, Blackfish is on serve, looking to close the gap. They're trailing by five with less than 30 minutes to play in this quarterfinal matchup. It was a pick call, but no big argument. Good spirit by the two teams. There is some, some discussion also from uh, the handler and it's in the Blaskowicz. Just to make sure we put the disc back at the right stall. Action will take back in three, two, one. There you go. So Blackfish with a fully one to Samson Hoy. Number 12 from British Columbia. Nice little underpass. Getting away from still another floaty disc. And Blaskowicz is defending this disc, so Manic en possession du disc. La ligne défensive de Manic, encore une fois, qui provoque des revirements. Et là, c'est une longue passe, mais oh, c'est de l'intention n'était pas mauvaise, mais ça a été difficile avec le vent là, pour euh, Hull de bien lire ce disc. Je crois qu'il y a eu un appel là, sur le lancer. Alors, euh, on regarde, euh, ça semble être contesté. Yeah, and the Manic player actually walked off the field after, I think, an injury called. So definitely contact if they're calling an injury as well here. But hard to know if it was before he released the throw or after. Some discussion happening right now. On rappelle que Manic men 12 à 7. Ils ont inscrit 4 points bris jusqu'à maintenant. 2 points bris dans la première demi de ce match. Et 2 points bris à date. Dans cette deuxième mi-temps. Et comme Becky le soulignait si pertinemment un peu plus tôt, advenant une victoire de Manic dans ce match, ils euh, s'opposeront euh, probablement contre euh, Phoenix d'Ottawa en demi-finale. Advenant évidemment que Phoenix remporte leur quart de finale, ce qu'ils sont en voie de faire basé sur leur pointage actuel. Manic! Remet le disque au centre, Brissette rapidement à Hull qui jongle avec le disque, en garde le contrôle. Brissette qui feinte, qui trouve Lalonde Landry. C'est maintenant Massy. Lalonde à la, la longue, à Lalonde Landry. C'est Lalonde Landry qui atterrit avec le disque. Et c'est un autre point bris pour le Manic qui met maintenant 13 à 7. Manic coming down with these big plays time and time again. And that is what you want to see from any big game, a quarterfinal matchup here, but they have all the energy on their side. They're two points away from a semifinal. Blackfish, not much they can do at this point. They're hanging their heads and they kind of have been throughout the course of this game as well. So want to see them try to figure some kinks out going into the rest of bracket play today as well. But unfortunately for them, semifinals, not an option. The last uh, defense by Manic were mainly like disc, like straightforward pass, but just a little too much air. And with the wind, the, the, the disc was standing in the air and Manic playing a hard man-to-man. -man, they were there to give those discs 
a great battle and, and so far the Manic has won most of those aerial battles, at least on defense. We saw a great grab by Chata earlier in this game from uh, from BC for uh, for a point, but most of those uh, vertical battles has been won by Manic so far. So Manic will be pulling to Blackfish. Blackfish on serve, trailing by six. With approximately 20 minutes to play in this quarterfinal game. 20 minutes, unless one of the two teams reaches 15 points, which will close the game. Looking for in cuts for Blackfish. Great man to man coverage by Manning, putting a lot of pressure. Chata, which we have seen more on the receiving end now, is on the handler position looking to shake things up for Blackfish. Moving the disc about halfway down the field, just reaching the brick point, threatening to score an eight point. Taking their time, looking for a reset. Small dish pass to reset the stall. Stuck on the sideline, looking for option. There it is, Samson Hoy giving an, abs an option to his handler, but there was a foul call or a pick call, I believe. I think it's a offensive foul call. Let's see what the argument is about the point. I haven't seen the observers confirming the point, but the players are going on the field, but there's still some discussion around. So I'm not too sure if the point was confirmed or not. Something happened in the stack. I haven't seen what happened, but I think it's Bagito who claimed. I think it was probably a little pushed, too much pushing in the, in the stack. Bagito, a veteran. It's interesting when you see only one Manic player staying, still arguing that call as well. I think sometimes those are the situations where you need to look over to what the rest of your team is doing. If they don't necessarily agree with your call, might be time to take a step back, but they seem to have resolved it. And Blackfish with the hold down 13 to eight, we get to see the fantastic Manic offensive line back on the field here and only two points away from the victory. So most of the team have a, some kind of signal, you know, when you make a call and you sometimes even, you're not sure yourself. So look at your teammate. If they have both arm on their chest, well, maybe you should stick to your call but if both of their hands are in their head and they have uh, some kind they look like desperate or they want to hide away from you well maybe you should take back your call yeah it's something that teams i've played on have done as well recently and uh, you put your head on your um, hand on your head for you know think about what you've done hand on your heart for that is the right call and it's just such a great way to enforce spirit of the game within your own team as well and enforce it to remind your teammates that you know bad calls do happen you make the wrong call but it's okay to look to your teammates to get a little bit of support Manic en possession du disque à la recherche d'un 14e point dans cette deuxième demi Riopel qui donne une belle option à Terou Riopel qui passe à Champagne les deux complices on trouve le mieux au milieu de terrain Un appel, euh, je crois, probablement de l'obstruction. Un appel de pic. On remettra le disque rapidement en jeu. Il ne semble pas avoir euh, trop de discussion. Quoique l'observateur, l'observeuse est sur le terrain, mais on n'aura pas besoin d'aller à l'observeuse. On remettra le disque en jeu dans 3, 2, 1. Et voilà. L'action reprend. Le mieux qui vraiment soutient trouve Riopel. Riopel. Je pense à Thérou que c'est bien démarqué. Oh, quel beau plongeon défensif ici du numéro 7. That's Edward Guo with the D for Blackfish. An opportunity to break. Chata putting it long, but it's out of reach. Way out of reach. Too much gas, too much whip on that flick. It was a great decision. There was significant separation between the receiver and his defender, but unfortunately, Blackfish, knowing, uh, being aware that time is running out, trying to, to 
to, to create some opportunity very too quick, unfortunately. Manic de retour en possession. Champagne qui trouve Paris, qui a été la victime de la dernière défensive. Duchesneau. Pivot cherche une option. Trouve Champagne en soutien. Champagne qui remet de façon latérale à Théroux. C'est au tour de Paris. Paris qui feinte. Remet à Duchesneau. Duchesneau qui donne des options. Et là, voilà, c'est une, oh, une passe à, directement dans les mains de la défensive. Là, Duchesneau qui va s'en vouloir sur la dernière séquence. Another break opportunity for Blackfish. Looking for their first break point of the game. Trailing by five. Going lateral. Moving the disc on the sideline. Oh, and it's straight into Champagne. Uh, then another, I'd say, unforced error by, uh, by, by Blackfish, but now Champagne, Champagne losing the disc. Another opportunity near the end zone, in the red zone for Blackfish, in hopes of nailing their first break point of the game. Some movements, but there was some, uh, yeah, so a little pushing, a little elbowing. Players discussing, no big arguments here. They will settle it pretty quickly. So the disc is in. Trying to isolate a cutter, but need to reset the little lefty. Oh, nice bid by Fairies. That was not sufficient. Blackfish scoring their first break point of the game. Their ninth point. Blackfish is showing us that they can actually do it. Unfortunately, in the early parts of this game, they were unable to convert on any of their break chances, but bringing it in now, only 11 minutes remaining, so they would have to really be able to convert three breaks in a row here to bring it within one before the horn goes. Not sure if they will be able to do that. Manic has valued the disc, but the first point we also saw there from Manic where they made some execution errors making the drops from Champagne there. Not something we've really seen from them throughout the course of this game. You are right, it was an uncharacteristic, uncharacteristic uh, uh, pass from Duchesneau straight into the defender's hand. So something uh, we haven't seen from uh, Manic during uh, this game. So uh, let's see how Manic's O-line reacts to their first break point. They are suffering uh, into this game. As Becky mentioned, a little over 10 minutes before hard cap. 13-9 in favor of Manic, looking to play in the semis, assuming they win. Alors Manic qui sera, recevra le disque dans l'espoir d'inscrire un 14e point dans ce match et de reconfirmer une avance de 5 points tard en deuxième demi. Ils viennent d'être brisés pour la première fois du match. Après euh, que Champagne a échappé un disque, et un peu plus tôt, Duchesneau avait tenté une passe qui avait finalement atterri directement dans les mains d'un défenseur euh, de Blackfish. Thierry Opel en possession du disque. Milieu de terrain, trouve Champagne, fin seul. Champagne, remessagement à Thérou. On bouge bien le 10 du côté des chandails blancs. Bisson, il fait un bon match celui-ci. Bisson remet en soutien à Paris qui vient de l'aider. Encore une fois, Paris et Bisson s'échangent le disque. Paris est parti. Mais non, on passe à Ferries. Et lui, il connaît un excellent match en offensive. Champagne, fin de la passe. La continuité à Ferries. Il cherche une option, commence à se faire tard. Il y a eu contact ici. It was a foul call, even though the pass was completed. Champagne looking to confirm. There you go. No arguing. This, this stays at Thérou. Thérou. Près de la ligne de Brick. Trouve Champagne en soutien. On perd des verges, mais on garde possession. On revient exactement au même point avec une passe de Champagne à Thérou. Il y a eu un appel d'obstruction dans le stack. Fait que c'est Paris qui aurait provoqué accidentellement l'obstruction. Thérou, coincé sur la ligne, cherche une option, trouve Ferries. 
Ferries. Une dizaine de verges de la zone de pointe, mais coincé sur la ligne encore une fois. Fait la passe à Champagne, mais là, c'est euh, télégraphié un peu. C'est le numéro 3 qui effectue la défensive. Nice reading, my number 3, from Blackfish. Very well, the red, but there was a Blackfish player injured on the play, so we're... We'll you can stop see the him action. rolling off the field as well to make sure that he can get off so the injury sub comes on quickly to start moving the disc up the field here for Blackfish with time not on their side, but hopefully he's okay. Still lying down. Andrew Ling did a great... Uh, Great reading on the last uh, defense, and he's now in possession of the disc. Time is running out for Blackfish, still trading by four. Late in the second half of this Open Division quarterfinal. Ling putting the disc in the middle to Young. Ling again. Kata bombing it away it's floating and it's completed number 40 jordan dylan closing while reducing the gap 10 to 13 manix still ahead by three and you gotta wonder where this defense was in the earlier stages of this game when they needed to be getting the, these breaks they've now held and broke twice in a row here so three point run here for blackfish and blows my mind a little bit about how we're only seeing it now with six minutes left to go. Manic taking a strategic timeout here to stop the momentum of Blackfish also helps with the time on the clock a little bit as well, but six minutes, Blackfish need two points. It's theory, it is doable, but Manic trying to just slow it down right now. So some clock management by Montreal. Are we gonna say it was a uh a little too late for Blackfish, or are we going to say, well, it's better late than never? Who knows? So some what, what we'll know what to say in about uh, less than 10 minutes now. So Blackfish still have a, a challenging, challenging, uh, uh, a challenging game to, <laughs> to in order to win uh, this uh, quarterfinal. Still trading by three, and uh, the last two break points. Uh, you know, the points were fairly long, so still the clock is in favor of Montreal. Let's see what's going to happen. The winner of this game will play Phoenix. They're up 13 to 8 with only five minutes remaining. So Phoenix will win that one and head to the semifinals. So it'll either be Manic or Blackfish. See if Blackfish can generate two quick points here. Manic just need to take care of the disc and swing it around really to run down the time at this point. And if you like ultimate, well, we have plenty of ultimate for you today. We have, uh, this is the first of four webcasts we'll be featuring here today. So we have, uh, we'll have the pleasure to be uh, with you and Becky all day long, enjoying some great Canadian ultimate. So the next webcast will be held at 10.40 and will feature some women's semi-final. Looking forward to it. But in the meantime, Manic, au service. On reçoit le 10 Champagne à Thérou. La ligne offensive montréalaise qui n'avait été victime d'aucun bris jusqu'à tout récemment. Il vient de subir deux bris consécutifs. Thérou cherche une option. Trouve Champagne. Riopel en milieu de terrain. À leur propre ligne de points. Une passe qui flotte. Thérou l'attrape. Feinte, la bombe. Il va sagement plutôt un lancer droit. Trouve Paré. Paré à Thérou. On reste calme du côté montréalais. On veut garder la possession. Thérou qui la bombe à le mieux, qui est fin seul. Qu'est-il arrivé? Il y aurait eu un appel ici, je crois. Sans aucun doute. Une obstruction. Kata qui prétend avoir été victime d'obstruction, le mieux qui dit Ah, ben j'étais lettement en avance. Well, le mieux was suspiciously all by himself, considering what's at odd right now. He so, was. so there was a, there was a pick call. I didn't saw what happened. I was uh, focusing on the Teru, the handler. So let's see what the uh, more likely will 
There's still discussion go happening between the two players. Katha here saying that his teammate Jordan Dillon was in his way as Lemieux made his cut. Lemieux arguing that he was far enough away from Katha that he was without outside of the 10 yards, but Katha and Dillon had both stopped moving in the middle of the field when that disc was actually released, which was quite a ways before he caught it. So easy to see that there could have been a pick call. Credit to Lemieux for continuing his cut through the call to the end zone. If that's not caught, then that's a turnover. Observers hearing both sides. No pick call, I think, is the ruling. So if there's no pick call, we are confirming Mannix 14 point ahead by four late in the second half of the game. One point shy of, of a semi final. Game point here for Manic. Observers ruling that Katha was not within 10 feet to make the call. And Manic on the doorstep now as it looks like they will take another quick timeout here to run down the last two minutes of this clock. And Sorry, not a timeout, getting into a huddle. It's always confusing Just, when teams do yeah. that. A little bromance here on the field. But deservedly so, as they are now in position to close this one out. There's two minutes left before the hard cap horn. They are on game point, up four points. They are headed to the 2018 Canadian Ultimate Championship semifinal here. Alors, plus que quelques instants sépare Manic d'un accès à la demi-finale de ce championnat canadien division Open. Manic qui mène 15 à 14 à 10 plutôt dans cette deuxième mi-temps. Manic qui a inscrit 5 points bris depuis le début du match contre seulement 2 pour Blackfish. Blackfish on serve with a pull landing way out of bounds. Number three, Andrew Ling, will be the one putting the disc back into play. With the wind picking up, bombing it to Kata, two defender on him, but Bouillon is touching the disc. Oh, there was still a bit, but out of reach for Kata. So Manic in possession at their own goal line. Brissette looking for an open player, Bouillon. And we hear the horn, so that will be the last point of this game. The two teams will finish the point. Whatever the output, Manic is now confirmed to play in this national championship semi-final. Brissette, qui remet à Lalon Landry, remet à Brissette encore une fois, mon appel, un marché. Travel call. A little uh, meaningless at this point, but hey, the two teams want to make sure they play up until the end, which is what Ultimate is all about. Brissette qui tente la bombe, mais ça a été bloqué en défensive. Et là, le, le joueur le numéro 40, Jordan Dillon, qui a effectué la défensive, là, qui semble souffrir un peu. Blackfish, back in possession, Kata. Finding Ling on the sideline. Last point of this game. We heard the horn a few seconds ago, telling the players that this is the last point. Regardless of the output of this point, Manic has confirmed there that they will be playing in the semi-final, more likely against Phoenix from Ottawa. And it's an unforced error by Blackfish throwing it away, attempting to throw along, but it landed out of bound near the brick mark line. So Brissette will put it back into play. So hearing some loud cheering from other fields, I guess some women teams being happy with the output of the game. So Brissette being a uh, hand block right now. Yeah, Lucas Main on the mark there. And that cheering you just heard was Venus beating Salty on Universe Point over there to make it to the semifinals as well. We will be streaming their game against Stella right after this at 1040. Venus having one hell of a Canadian championship this weekend. And here we are. That was the last point by for this game. And from a Blackfish, that was their 11th point, but that was too short. 
Manic winning this quarterfinal, 14-11, and heading to the semifinal, which will happen in a very short time. Yeah, the so semifinal's on at 12.30. We will try to get you updates from that, but we will be streaming the women's semi next at 10.40, and then Masters finals at 2 and 4.30 as well. So stay with us, the next webcast will happen. We'll start at 10.40, so less than half an hour from now. Congratulations to uh, Manic for uh, their great uh, performance, great display of ultimate, and the great spirit by the two teams. So Blackfish uh, having played a great tournament, but just falling short in this quarterfinals. Alors merci d'avoir été des nôtres. Le prochain web diffusion sera dans moins d'une demi-heure à 10h40. On vous présentera des euh, demi-finales du côté féminin qui euh, présentera entre autres Vénus du Québec. C'est l'équipe qu'on entendait crier euh, à l'arrière lors des derniers instants. Ils viennent de gagner leur match contre Salty en point Universal. Félicitations à Vénus. Alors, on vous rejoint dans moins de 30 minutes. Soyez des nôtres. Thank you, Becky, for this great webcast and see you in, uh, in a few minutes. So, thanks for being with us. Stay tuned.